Hey Eagle fans, it's Eagle Fan Carl. This is going to be my preview prediction video for the big game Sunday afternoon against the LA Rams. And of course this is a real important game because it's going to be interesting to see how this team responds uh, to the loss last week against Seattle. Uh, it's also the second straight game on the road on the West Coast. Of course everything sort of got I was very different for them this week. They weren't practicing at home. They were practicing out in California all week as they decided to stay on the West Coast. And then, of course, it's just an important game overall because of the standings and the fact that the Eagles are first place in the NFC East and the Rams are in the first place in the NFC West. Uh, so it's two first place teams going up against each other. They're in, with, in one game of each other as it relates to uh, the win-loss columns. So in terms of playoff tiebreakers for home field and buys and all that kind of stuff, it's important. Uh, depending on what happens in the 1 o'clock game, uh, the Eagles may already have the NFC East clinched if the Giants beat the Cowboys, but if the Cowboys win, then the Eagles would be able to clinch the division with a win. So a lot of different things going on in this game and a lot of reasons why it's important. Now when you look at this game and you look at the matchups, there's a few things that really jump out. First of all is how well both of these offenses are playing. And there's a lot of similarity in these offenses and they have a lot of comparable statistics. Both are tied for first in scoring. They're number three and four. Four in uh, yardage. The Eagles are third. The Rams are fourth in yardage. They're very. The Eagles have a slight advantage on third down in the sense that the Eagles are completing 46% of their third downs and the Rams are completing 43% of their third downs. But then on the on another statistic on offense in terms of surren sacks surrendered, uh, the Rams are a little bit better as the Rams have given up 20 sacks, whereas the Eagles have given up 28 sacks. So uh, you know there is a little bit of uh, you know so there's a let's put it this way there's a lot of consistency among both of these teams as, as their offenses go. Both of them are playing real well. The thing that really jumps out, I said they're tied for the first in the league in scoring. They have the exact same amount of points through 11 games of the season, which is kind of crazy. 361 points both teams have, which averages to just over 30 points a game. So both of these two teams are doing real well scoring, and they're doing real well moving the ball. So it's going to be interesting to see how the defenses react to that. And that's really where I think this game gets decided, is then on the defensive side of the ball, because both of these offenses can move the ball and can score. Now, one statistic I've heard a lot of Eagles fans have concern about this uh, week is uh, the sack totals for the Rams. The Rams are third in sacks in the league with 37, uh, and which averages out to just over three per game. The interesting thing about their stat sacks total, though, is that 13 of those sacks came in games against the bottom feeders in the NFC West, the Cardinals and the 49ers. So the... In many respects, the Rams have sort of, they've gotten over a third of their sacks against bad teams. Uh, and there's been three times they've played the Cardinals and 49ers. Uh, they've played the Cardinals twice and the 49ers once. So they uh, really sort of racked up a lot of sacks in those games. Not to say that they haven't been fairly consistent all season long with sacks. I think there was only one game where they were shut out with no sacks. Uh, but for the most part, a, a lot of them came in those three games against those two teams, which are not really good teams this year. That said, the one person that I would be a little concerned about is Connor Barwin, just because you've got that revenge thing going on. Oh, I know he is a, he's a good guy, and I think he knows why he was let go. It was really a salary cap decision. It's not that the Eagles were displeased with him. It was just a bad situation in terms of his salary cap number and what it was going to be for this coming season, and they just couldn't keep him on the roster with that. Uh, so I think he understands that, but there's probably still some motivation there that he's going to want to try and show up his old team and make them realize that, hey, you made a mistake uh, getting rid of me. Uh, so I, I think that is one thing to sort of, um, it's going to be interesting to watch to see how well he plays in this game. But I really think when you get down to it in this game, you know, there's a lot of talk in terms of the sat, the pass rush of the Rams. There's a lot of talk about, you know, the two first round quarterbacks taken last year, number one and number two in the, uh, you know, the Carson Wentz versus Jared Goff scenario and who's, who's the better quarterback of those two. And both are playing so well this season. And, you know, that's really the, the matchup everyone's looking at. But as I look at the statistics, I think that all of that is sort of a misdirection as to what's probably really going to decide this game, and that's which team is able to run the ball better. And that's because the Rams' passing game is so much based on their running game. Todd Gurley is a really good running back, 
And, you know, he has been really effective this year and really does a lot to set up their play action. Uh, so if the Eagles are able to shut down their running game, I think that, and make the Rams one-dimensional, that really changes a lot of things for what the Rams offense wants to do. Uh, the flip side of that, the Eagles aren't quite as uh, bound to their running game. They can, they can pass the ball without it. But the Eagles have been really good at running the ball this season. And that's where it gets real interesting as it relates to the statistics in this game is the running defenses. And the Eagles obviously have the top ranked running defense in the league. Uh, and they're, when you look at, like I said, you know, a lot of that was because teams were one-dimensional in blowout games where uh, they had to pass in the second half. But when you look even at the runs per play, the running, running yards per play, we're still towards the top of the league. Flip that on the uh, other side in terms as it relates to the Rams defense. The Rams defense is horrible against the run, both in terms of yards per game and yards per play. In fact, it actually gets worse when you look at their yards per play. The yards per game, they're giving up their 27th in the league in yards per game. And then when you look at the yards per play, it drops down to 30th. So there's only two teams in the league that are worse than them in terms of the amount of yards they give up per play on running plays. So the Rams' defense is lousy against the run. So I'd be shocked if we don't try and win this game on the ground. Uh, it's not that you know the, the Eagles are going to be scared of the Wentz versus Goff situation. I think it's just you recognize when there's that kind of a weakness on a defense, you go after it. And that's what the Eagles, I think, really have to do. That then, uh, if we are then able to establish that, that will set up our play action and really allow us to do what we want to do in the passing game as well. With the Eagles, it's just all about stopping Gurley, and we've been very good at doing that for the most part this season. We've been able to really stop teams uh, in their running games. So I think when you when you factor all of that in, I think the edge does go to the Eagles in this area, and that's the one area where there is a major difference. Everything else in this game is really pretty evenly divided. Even in some of the odd areas that you get into, like turnovers and stuff like that, they're they're right there, uh, you know, one away from each other. Uh, the Eagles are tied for fifth the Rams are tied for seventh so and it's only a difference of one turnover uh, that we're talking about so even there the teams are really even as it relates to those areas so uh, when you when you see all those statistics and then you see that one major difference I think that's the one that really stands out at you so I think that the Eagles would be foolish not to try and take advantage of that and run the ball in this game and that's what I expect to happen in this game of course, the other interesting thing about this game as it relates to, you know, the, how this game could potentially play out, this game is a road game technically, but there are a lot of Eagles fans that are apparently going to Southern California and, you know, I could do a whole diatribe on how I think the NFL was stupid for trying, for absolutely doing everything they could to get not just one, but two teams in L.A. L.A. is not a football town, or at least not a pro football town. And that is showing when you have a team like the Chargers that routinely are having a lot of visitors show up like we did earlier this season. And then I think you could very well have a situation like you do, uh, what you could potentially have this Sunday when the Eagles fans outnumber the Rams fans in a huge stadium like the LA Coliseum. Uh, so that's really could be another so, sort of dynamic in this where the Eagles could turn this into a home game essentially with the Eagles fans. And in fact, the, the crazy thing that I saw reported out this week is that Sean McVay, their head coach, was basically saying that they were going to have to prepare for potentially doing a silent count. A silent count in a home game is absolutely ridiculous. Uh, and I think it just goes to show how good the Eagles fans are and how well they travel. And when you've got a situation where a home team really isn't supporting a good team like the Rams, Eagles fans are going to take advantage of that. They're going to show up in big numbers. And it could be a situation where Eagles fans outnumber Rams fans and turn into almost another home game for the Eagles. So that's another interesting part of this game and how it could also potentially really affect the outcome as well. Now, as far as my prediction for this game, I have been going back and forth on this uh, all week. Um, you know, it's one of those things where you start talking about, you know, when you make predictions, especially as a, as a fan of a team, you know, do you let your heart rule or your head rule? 
And lots of times it's your head versus your heart when you're making predictions, uh, whereas you kind of know that the team isn't going to win. So, But it, with this game, it's not even that, uh, because my heart tells me to pick the Eagles, and my head tells me to pick the Eagles. Uh, and all of that stuff that sort of goes into it, you know, when you look at all the statistics, the Eagles should win this game, I think. Uh, so for me, it's almost my head and heart versus my psyche at this point. Uh, the loss uh, last week against the Seahawks, I think, really sort of was a reminder of just how quickly this season could end up being a big disappointment. We've been really geared up for a lot of high hopes this year for the Eagles based on how they played the first three quarters of the season. And then you lay a stinker like you did against the Seahawks, it sort of can... Uh, I guess make us as Eagles fans get, start getting prepared for the worst where, you know, that's what I'm worried about. I'm worried about the Eagles disappointing me again. So it's not necessarily that I, I am reluctant uh, with a prediction because of my head versus my heart. It's more my heart and head versus my psyche. And I really am worried about that part of it. So I'm trying to put that part of it aside and say, listen, if you look at the numbers in this game, the Eagles should win this game. And uh, it's for that reason I am going to pick the Eagles to win this game. I thought the Eagles would go 1-1 one one on the West Coast anyway since they lost the Seahawks game. Then that would mean that they should win the Rams game. I think they will respond a lot differently than they did last year. This is a solid team with a lot of veterans on it. Uh, and a very young, hungry quarterback, I think, that wants to go back out and redeem himself for the poor showing that he had against the Seahawks. So I think you put all of that stuff together, and I really like the Eagles' chances in this game. That said, even though the both these teams have uh, averaged over 30 points a game, I think because of the way the Eagles approach this, probably with a lot of running, I think the score ends up actually being a little lower scoring than maybe what people would expect. So I'm going to go ahead and predict the Eagles to win this game 27-21. Let me know in the comments below, what's your prediction for this game? Do you think the Eagles uh, should win this thing easily? Are you uh, have that psyche problem like I do and you're worried that they're going to go ahead and disappoint us again? Uh, and you sort of have some of those Negadelphia tendencies uh, like sometimes I do? Uh, or are you uh, just thinking, no, I think the Rams are a better team and they're going to win? Uh, let me know in the comments below what you think. I'll go ahead and check in afterwards. Until then, fly Eagles fly.